This is called a unshielded twisted pair Ethernet cable. Very boring, isn't it? What is it, a snake? Mm -hmm. Well done, poodle. Now, if you're connecting one device to another, you once again need some kind of media that allows for a data transmission from one device to another. In other words, you need some type of data link to allow data to be transferred from one device to another. I've already shown you Ethernet. This is a very common type of Ethernet. This is Cat5e or Category 5e. We'll talk more about Ethernet later. But Cat5e, this is an example of Cat6 Ethernet cabling. Unshielded twisted pair Ethernet cabling like this is probably the most common type of cabling that you're going to encounter. But it didn't start there. <laughs> Now, Ethernet didn't start with unshielded twisted pair cabling. It started with 10 base 5 cabling. Very big cabling. This not easy to use. It actually has these black markings on the cable, and that's where you would use a wiretap or vampire tap, if you prefer, to connect to the network. You couldn't just connect anywhere. You had to connect on these black markings if you wanted a good signal. And this is how it, that would look. Notice this crazy large transceiver. This is how you would connect to the network. So to give you an idea of scale, here I've got a $1 US banknote. So $1, here's a British pound. So notice how big that is. This is massive cabling, really, really old technology. And it gets worse. To actually connect your PC to the network, you needed a drop cable like this. So you would have to connect that to the transceiver. And as you can see, it came out there. This is very thick cabling, not very easy to use. And that would connect to your network card. So you would have this kind of setup. That's how you would get onto the network. It's an absolute nightmare, this cabling. Very hard to work with. It was very temperamental. This is using what's called a bus network. In a bus network, all the devices are connected on one long cable like this. Nightmare. I'll demonstrate this in a separate video uh, where I'll build a 10 base 5 network and show you one that's working. But for the moment, just notice how ridiculously difficult this cable is to work with, how thick it is. This is called ThickNet for a good reason, because it's so thick. So after we had ThickNet, they then fortunately developed ThinNet or 10 base 2. And if you ever wondered why it's called ThinNet versus ThickNet, just notice the difference in the size of these cables. This is ThinNet versus ThickNet. This cabling is much, much thinner than this cabling but also used a bus topology, also had various issues. Today, we tend to use UTP, so unshielded twisted pair cabling like this, that's very common, or we use fiber cables, and there are different types of fiber cables. I'll talk more about fiber cables later. Uh, we have multi-mode fiber and single-mode fiber, but the idea is, is that I have a network interface card like this, or more modern example like this, this gets inserted into a computer, and this is how I gain access to the network. A network interface card has a MAC address or media access control address. That is essentially a burnt-in address, burnt-in by the manufacturer, that identifies this network interface card on the Ethernet network. If you don't have a network interface card in your laptop, you could use a USB to Ethernet adapter like this. So that would allow you to connect to the network using Ethernet, or once again, using wireless. Here's an example of a wireless network interface card. You essentially need a way to get a node onto the network, and a network interface card is the way that you connect yourself to the Ethernet network. A lot of devices like iPhones, as an example, have built-in network interface cards. They connect directly onto the wireless, and they have something like this built inside of them that allows them to connect to the wireless network. Remember, we are transmitting data 
from one device to another using some kind of media, which could be the air, could be physical cabling.